We want to get reaction to this better than expected jobs report here. Again, that headline number coming in 216,000. Wage gains were also stronger than expected on a month over month basis. We saw a gain of four tenths of a percent. We want to bring in Neela Richardson, ADP chief economist. We also have Stephanie Roth joining us in studio, Wolf Research chief economist. Stephanie, let me start with you just in terms of this better than expected jobs report that we're getting here this morning. What do you think this does for what Jared was just talking about in terms of the Fed's timeline here and potentially delaying that first rate cut? So our base case has been that the Fed's going to cut in Q2. I think March is a bit early. Um, so I think that still puts that in play. The report was kind of a bit interesting. So when you look at the establishment survey, we got, yeah, a better than, than expected headline print. We got some downward revisions to the prior month, so let's keep mm -hmm. that in mind. Some of that was kind of offset to some extent. Um, wages were certainly strong, so that was a, that was certainly a negative when you when you look at the from the Fed's perspective. But then when you shift to the household survey, that looked quite a bit weaker. So we got a, 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 d a decrease in participation, um, mm -hmm. but the unemployment rate was pretty steady because you had a, a pretty sharp drop in household employment, which is kind of a reversal of what you got the prior month. So the household survey was was kind of a, a, a bit messy when you, when you look at it. So overall, I would say probably doesn't change the timing too much, at least from what we were expecting. Perhaps the, the March expectation is, is perhaps a bit early. Yeah, and, and Neil, I want to bring you in on this one. And just thinking about the, the story we've had for the U.S. labor market over the last several months of this resilient but continually slowing growth, um, I know that the headline job gains here are going to get a lot of the attention because that's you know the easiest number to digest. But does this really change? Does this report change the story that you think is the overriding one right now for the U.S. labor market? It does. I, I do think it, it does change that. We look at uh, the data at ADP very, very closely. And we put out a report just yesterday showing 164,000 private sector jobs. I, I had to check the number in this BLS report twice, maybe three times, because it's the same number for private sector jobs. And what, what we're seeing is a bump up in the private sector. So in October, November, they were running close to 100,000 uh, with the withdrawing strength of of leisure and hospitality, which was the stalwart of 2023. Now we see a resurgence in December in the private sector. Again, a, a healthy dose of leisure and hospitality after it had been declining for several months prior and then continued strength in healthcare and notably uh, construction, which is an interest rate sensitive sector. So I think what we're seeing is a bit of a bump up at the end of the year that maybe the Fed will take notice of. And I guess, Neela, in thinking about that change in the labor market, is this kind of maybe a way to interpret the corporate sector's confidence that we are not tipping into recession? Really the opposite kind of what we had in the conversation this time last year. And though it is on the margins, it seems to me, as you're outlining it there, that most managers who were looking at the economy going one way now are comfortable betting that it's actually not going to happen as we get into this year. You know, the business sector can't rest its operations on whether or not we're going on recession. That's a story for the Wall Street. That's a story for analysts. The business sector has to keep operating regardless of the economic environment. And I think they're very close to uh, what's going on with companies. And what we're seeing with companies is consistent hiring, especially with small businesses. ADP uh, has a really good read on small businesses. They continue to hire with strength. And so overall, the picture, what they're seeing from consumers, still strong, still spending, with companies uh, still hiring, is a pretty solid uh, economy. Now, that those interest rates are going to have an effect. We're knowing that consumers are shifting more into credit card debt and interest rates are at you know two-decade highs. There's some... Uh, a frozen pond of housing market indicators because of lack of inventory. So the economy is solid, but there are some gaps that need to be filled. Uh, but for uh, a report at the end of 2023, I think we're in pretty solid footing. Stephanie, I want to go back to you on wages and what we're seeing there, because we've been talking about this rebalancing that's happening right now within the labor market. But the fact that we did see an increase in wages on that annual basis, the month over month number coming in hotter than expected. What is that going to do just in terms of how much this could potentially complicate that last mile of the Fed's uh, ability here to really bring down inflation back to 2%? You know, I'm not that worried about the, the print that we got. We're going to get the ECI at the end of this month. That's going to be the gold standard when we're thinking about wages. So. The average hourly earnings number also is pretend we are calling for a 0.4 in part because the, the survey week fell later in the month, which tends to push up the print. Mm -hmm. um, so the ECI doesn't deal with stuff like that. 
And then if you look at the, the couple months prior to, to the last two, average hourly earnings was, was kind of depressed. So when, when you look at the, the broad picture, you are still seeing a decelerating wage dynamic. So this, this print doesn't really call that into question. I think we're going to be all eyes are looking for this ECI print that we're going to get in, in just a couple weeks. And that's going to really be what's, what's most important. And my guess is we'll continue to see this deceleration in the wage backdrop. And I guess we, we've talked a little bit about revisions so far um, following today's report, but just in your guys' work as you think big picture about the U.S. labor market, where revisions fit into that conversation, um, I think we're going to get the benchmark revisions maybe next month or in March. Um, how do you think about that in telling the full story of the U.S. labor market? Because I think for a lot of investors, it's kind of a hot money day, right? You come in, here's the headline. No one remembers oftentimes how it was revised. So how do you as an economist think about that? I mean, the revisions have been so difficult for the past couple of years, especially since in this post-COVID environment, it's been really difficult to seasonally adjust properly. Typical patterns are quite a bit different than what, the, what they have been over the prior couple of years. So it's, it's, it's difficult for investors, and that's one reason that drives a, a lot of the volatility from, from print to print. I like to just look at longer-term trends, three- and six-month trends, to try to look through a lot of this noise um, and look at a lot of different indicators to try to confirm and look at a broad picture of the economy. And what we're seeing, broadly speaking, is the economy's still pretty firm. We're not headed to recession in, in any anytime soon. And wages have come, uh, inflation has come down. We're now looking at inflation just sitting above 2%, which is not that far from where the Fed wants to be. And that's why the, that's why Powell is able to, to turn a little bit more dovishly recently. And, and those trends are still in place. Neela, going off of what Stephanie was just saying, just some of the trends that have been in place or are in place right now, how do you see the labor market shaking out, not taking a longer term view, but six months from now, nine months from now, what do you think those numbers will look like in terms of some of the slowing that may be pushed out a little bit just in terms of what those expectations were initially going into this report? Yeah, I think we're going to continue to see some solid hi hiring, but there are going to be weak spots. Manufacturing in particular is it's, it's weak, quite weak. Uh, we saw it shed jobs last month. Uh, and I think the survey indicators still point to continued shedding of jobs into 2024. So we should be worried about the good sector. Um, but I do agree that pay has gone down in terms of growth. Wages are still seeing a steady decline. We see it in our payroll data based on over 10 million uh, workers at ADP. And, and I think that is a good story for the Fed, who's concerned about inflation. Wage price spiral concerns that we had earlier in the recovery, they just are not holding water now. And that's good news for those who are really concerned about inflation spiking up again, even in the face of a very strong jobs report for December. Yeah, and Neil, I wanted to, to ask you, um, while we have you, about those, those wage data that you guys put out, because you have a really interesting series, which is wage gains for job switchers has actually been declined, or the rate of growth there has been declining faster than overall wage gains. I'm curious um, how you think about that number specifically, because it's really, you know, again, you talk about on the margins of the labor market, the change in the rate of change, that to me feels like a big mover when it comes to, you know, the wage cost push inflation story. It, it is a big mover, and I, I think what it underscores is the stability of the labor market, which is not something we had before, in like in 2022. The way I think about it is how we started the year in January of 2023. The premium that we measure from switching jobs versus staying at the same job was 7%. So you got a 7% bump in pay by switching jobs typically. That premium has shrunk to just two and a half percent. So the return to switching, to trying a new job on for size has really, really shrunk. And that means that there's just not as many opportunities out there. We're still seeing low unemployment, but the balance between supply and demand has come closer together. That's good news, I think, going into 2024, again, because it points to uh, more moderate pay growth that's more sustainable. Stephanie, when you get into what uh, Neela was just saying there, just in terms of the fact that maybe we aren't going to see the type of uh, build up here or pay off if you were to switch jobs, given the fact that that's coming back into line uh, with what we saw pre-pandemic, how long do you think that's going to take in terms of this rebalancing to actually work its way out and we see more of what we saw from the trends that we did pre-pandemic? We're getting a lot closer to the pre-pandemic labor market. We're not quite there. Um, and job switchers versus job stayers, their wages is, is one of the, the best ways to look at it. Also, if you look at the quits rate, we're now back down roughly to where we were at, at the end of last cycle, towards the highs of, of where we were in the past cycle. 
Um, so I think we're, we're close to there. We're not all the way. So I think it'll, it'll probably be just a couple more months. This, is, this rebalancing has happened very swiftly. There was, there was no, very little expectation for, the, uh, for inflation to come back down without a rising unemployment rate, and that has played out because the economy is just kind of getting back to where we were back in 2019. And I guess, you know, Stephanie, thinking about the, the later parts of 2024 in the labor market, is there a time where you expect that net job growth would go negative? Um, I know that's been a, a conversation from some folks. Everyone's kind of been waiting for it, I think, for 18 months now. Haven't really seen it. Um, is that something that you guys are, are modeling out and, and maybe how you think that would play into the story that, that you were just discussing around the U.S. economy with this kind of immaculate soft landing here in a way? We don't have job growth going negative in our, our base case. Our forecasts are for the softest landing. We now have growth looking at about 2% for this year, which is, which is you know, just about trend. Mm -hmm. um, the, de the decline in, in rates and easing of financial conditions should allow some of the cyclical sectors to actually start to stabilize here. So no, we don't, we don't have job growth going negative. It should average you know, in, in the low 100s this year. All right, uh, we'll leave it there. Stephanie, Neela, thanks so much.